Everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. I am Kimberly Knox. You're in the kitchen with KK. And we're going to have another day where we are rolling out more recipes that are terrific for late summer health, which focuses on our spleen and our stomach. I am a passionate integrative health coach. I am an author of a book called Simple Cooking for Vitality. We're gonna be taking a recipe right from the stomach and bone marrow section. I am a speaker and I am really, really passionate about making a dent in our nationwide disease epidemic that is driven by metabolic syndrome. That's correct. We've got broken metabolism. So we're getting right back in the kitchen where the problem started. It starts with food. We need to take back the control, get back in the kitchen, extend our longevity and our vitality. I like to call this my vitality cuisine and vitality cooking. Very, very simple though. This is not, we're not judging on technique. We're making simple recipes that heal your body, give your cells the nutrients they need to do the powerful things they already know how to do. And that is keep you strong and healthy. We're also building the immune system during the fall, the pre-fall. We're in late summer. It's so important now to build your health. It's an earth and uh, it is an earth sign, the late summer season. So we're building we're building our strength and our health so we can carry forward success into the fall. Very, very important. So we're going to focus on today uh, ginger root. Ginger root is an amazing herb for late summer. It dries out, it heats up the body and dries out dampness that can occur when your spleen is out. Spleen deficiency is very uh, prevalent in Florida with the humidity and the standard American diet, which tends to destroy that spleen as part of our lymphatic system, part of our immune system. So important. So this hair ginger soup is just phenomenal. Super, super easy. You need to learn how to make soup recipes. And then I keep them in jars. I meal prep for clients. Soups are really, really popular. Put some in the freezer. You always have soup available. And uh, so you can make the soup fully vegan or vegetarian, or you can um, add bone broth to it, add in some really powerful uh, protein. And that's what, what I'm going to be doing because I actually have some homemade broth. So, or you can buy uh, like Dr. Dr. Kellyanne's broth um, or, you know, uh, just get a regular organic uh, vegetable broth if you're doing this fully uh, vegetable. So carrot ginger soup all of my recipes have a little description and the description helps you to understand how it's going to be forced in your body plus it is in the stomach and bone marrow section and it, it's going to explain in the beginning before the recipes a little bit about what that entails and the food that provides that healing information to that area so this delicious carrot based soup provides the natural warmth and nurturing that the stomach needs. We need to warm up our food now in late summer. Warmth, the summer, the stomach likes warmth to help with the digestion. And uh, while the ginger, garlic, and spices warm up your digestive fire, creating the perfect complement to salads <laughs> in the late summer and into the harvest season. Into the harvest season, we're now getting our root veggies, our squashes. And you will see that uh, I just did a squash recipe, the kombucha squash. So uh, something's boiling over there. That is my ginger root tea. It's phenomenal. All you do is slice up ginger root and add it to filtered water in a pot. And so let me turn this down. Uh, we get it going and then turn it down to simmer. So making ginger root tea is fantastic for this time of the year. It's fantastic for stomach, for digestion, for um, queasy stomach, anything like that. But I love to add it uh, as a medicinal factor. It's really warming to the body as well and works fantastic. So this is what we're using today in the soup. Could not be more easy. We're using fresh uh, garlic. We're using fresh ginger root. This is what ginger root looks like. Um, we're using about six to eight carrots. We're using some celery. Uh, we're using a... I'm going to use, this is a large onion. I'm just going to use half of it. And the spices, um, of course, we're putting bay leaf. Bay leaf is common in most every soup. Some Ceylon cinnamon, 
cardamom and coriander. They're great. They're a little bright smelling, but get used to all of these spices and, you know, get your spices really organized and laid out. It gets you inspired to utilize them. I'm actually going to put in a little nutmeg, even though the recipe doesn't have it in there. So um, the only work that you have to do is you're going to have to peel the carrots. So I'm going to be doing that offline. We're going to come back. And I'm going to be using a stock pot, one of my all clad pans. I have copper core all clad. So they heat really evenly. Uh, it's it's a great complement to uh, normally I would use my Dutch oven, the Le Creuset Dutch oven. Everyone needs to have one. Fantastic. It will outlive you. And, and it's a showpiece. They come in beautiful colors. I keep mine on the stove. It's fantastic right there because I like spots of red. So I'm going to um, peel all the carrots and um, we're just gonna get them cut up. Make sure you get some bowls, these really easy stackable bowls. You can get them on Amazon. Winko has a lot of them. They have smaller ones as well. Like I said, these prep bowls really help you. Easy to clean, they never break. They stack really easily and fantastic. You're gonna need a peeler and a good knife, okay? And we're going to get together. And this is so easy. Once you put a soup in the pot, all you got to do is cook it. And then uh, we're going to use an immersion blender as well to uh, to make it nice and smooth at the end. So we'll see you back here when uh, these things are peeled and cut up. Okay, the carrots are peeled. I know you know how to peel carrots. I'm going to give you a wonderful tip. Use a few extra carrots. And I'm going to be making a uh, crudite for an event, or you might want to be giving your children carrot sticks, or you might want to take some to work for a quick little snack with peanut butter or something. So keep the tops off the carrots. Now you've already got these prepped, or you can cut them into smaller parts. So then um, because we're going to be heating this soup, and then we're going to be blending it up, the pieces just need to be uniform so they cook relatively the same time. They don't need to be small. So I just cut chunks that are relatively the same size so that they will be evenly. If you have a big end like that, you might want to cut it in half. Meaning like this is a bigger end, just cut it in half like this. Okay. So just always put this, always put everything on the flat side so it doesn't roll around. That is a short way of cutting yourself. Carrots are done. The onion, uh, again, the onion doesn't need to be chopped up. You don't need to get, uh, you know, watery eyes, no problem there. And uh, make sure you have out your board scraper, 10 bucks, you need a board scraper. That way you're not gonna be tempted to dull the edges of your knives. The garlic, I just have rough chopped. So um, here we're making something nutrient dense. It's going to be easy, no stress in the kitchen. You're not being judged. You're just putting together a quick and easy recipe. We're gonna be using coconut oil in this. You can use avocado in the oil in the bottom. I don't like to overheat my high quality olive oil so uh, or avocado. Of olive oil. So I don't usually use that when I'm um, sauteing at high heat, uh, but I'm going to use some coconut oil today. Um, perfect to both high heat. And we're just going to be sauteing up the, uh, the onion. I'm going to be adding in the celery here and the garlic, the bay leaf, and then we're going to add in the carrots and everything else. So we've added just uh, a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of coconut oil. The pan is already heating. So we're gonna let the onions open up. There's nothing better than the smell of onions cooking in the kitchen. It brings everyone running. They know something yummy is happening. So we're gonna let them soften and get a little translucent, get the a uh, little bit of the water out. Uh, little, so let them go a couple minutes and we'll add in the garlic and the um, and the celery and then get in the spices. So we'll be right back. So 
So the kitchen is already smelling fantastic just from the onions. They're sizzling over there. So what we're going to add, not the celery first, what, what is it? We're going to be adding the ginger root. Now, um, I don't always peel it if there's rough spots, but you can use a microplane. Really easy way to get some of the spot stuff off here. If you're going to be putting it into a golden latte, you might want to peel a little more, but this is a really easy way to do it. You don't have to buy anything special. You can use a paring knife as well, but we're going to be hand blending this so it doesn't matter quite as much. So I'm just getting off all the rough pieces. So you see here, because the skin is fine, it's washed, it's organic, it's fantastic. We're just going to slice this up. I'm using a generous portion of ginger. An inch is what uh, I re recommend in the cookbook. I always usually do myself a little more garlic so you can adjust as you like. The garlic is just rough cut. It's not uh, minced or anything like that. So we're gonna add it to the onion. So I used to have a larger kitchen I could cook in. A lot of my photo shoots were done there. I'm showing you what you can do in a, this is a typical, uh, kitchen in an apartment, although we have a huge center island, so it's even better. But magic happens here. I cook for over 30 people in this kitchen. So what you can do. Sorry to make a lot of noise here. What you can do with this simple apartment appliances. All right, so bay leaf. Bay leaves are very common and uh in, in your soups. I'm gonna get one out to add. It's a beautiful one. So fantastic. Get acquainted with your herbs, really, really important. So let's get the bay leaf in there. We're just letting that get all fragrant. And, uh, and then we're just going to be adding everything and letting it simmer, okay? And that's how easy a soup is in the prep. So while the soup is cooking, you could be doing other things. Use your time wisely where you're here. Think about things you want for the week coming ahead or at least the next day. So we'll be right back. So I'm gonna show you the spices right here since I'm using the stove top over there. Um, in the recipe, it says just a pinch. And if you are interested in the cookbook, look in the notes below. You can get a signed copy only on my website because I self-published this. It's a very high quality book. I cannot carry the hardcover on Amazon, but the ebook is on Amazon. So Simple Cooking for Vitality is out there. People love it. I had a guy and his wife lose like 10 pounds just making some of these great recipes. One of their favorite soups was for the love of leeks. Um, white bean soup is fantastic. So Ceylon cinnamon. I like cinnamon. I'm going to add a little bit more. So I measured out a little bit more, at least a quarter of a teaspoon. And I'm putting in a few shakes of the cardamom and the coriander. Love both of these. They're bright, a little bit lemony in a way. Nutmeg, I also love nutmeg. Don't need much, just putting in a few shakes here. You can always add something more if you taste it. You're getting, We're just getting acquainted with these. So now we're gonna be adding the broth. Now this is my homemade, um, this is a whole chicken. I've made, so this is a whole chicken bone broth that I've slowly done and it's all strained out. You need four cups, that's 32 ounces. This is a 32 ounce jar. And these are jars that we use to store in the freezer. When you freeze them though, just make sure it's not filled to the top. This is a way you always have fresh soup. You can put it in a smaller one, bring it to work, fantastic. So let's get the carrots and the celery in there and the spices. And then we'll add the stock to that. Here's all the spices. Really nice to get a good salt box like this. It's great for cooking. You can just grab a pinch out when you're salting your water. So that's covered. We're gonna let it simmer for a good uh, 
I'm going to check it after a half hour. You want to bring it to a boil and then you want to let that simmer. And you just, you just want to test everything in there to when it's fork tender. And then we're going to be using an immersion blender uh, just to blend that up. It's a little safer and easier than pouring this hot stuff into your blender. Although you can do that as well. So I hope you're loving this um, easy recipe here. If you love these recipes and want to share them, I would love you to. And if you're having fun, give me a thumbs up. It's a, it's a work of passion here. So thanks for tuning in. Okay, are you ready to put the finishing touches on this delicious carrot ginger soup? Perfect for your stomach, nourishing, fantastic. We're finishing it with uh, coconut milk. Now in the recipe, it calls for a 5.4 ounce can. That is before they came out with the simple coconut milk. This one simple means it has no guar gum. Guar gum has been shown to irritate the lining, especially of your stomach line, your intestinal lining, you don't need anything else helping to cause leaky gut. So I now buy simple, check all of your labels, making sure there's no guar gum, soy lecithins, lecithins, sunflower lecithins, all of these things are thickeners. We don't need them. So we just get a jar. I'm going to be using the rest of this for a chocolate avocado mousse. So you just put it in the refrigerator and you're set. You need to have glass containers, glass jars. This is the immersion blender that I have. There's many different ones, but I was loading up some on some Nutribullet uh, accessories and I got this, it works fantastic. This is just a cover. So let's get the soup over here. We're gonna finish it. So we're gonna be taking out the bay leaf. which is right here on top, <laughs> fabulous. But this smells so yummy. Now with those warming spices, it just gives you a sense of calm and ease and this is exactly what you want. So uh, we just take the top off here. We're gonna put on blender part and uh, I'm gonna give it a whirl first before I add in the coconut milk. So there's just two settings on this. And basically, you just want to go like this. Do not angle it. Things will fly everywhere. So just hold on to your ears if it's not going to be getting to you. We just the process going. So maybe you can see down in there from the edge. And you'll see things starting to break up. And then we'll turn it on high. And we'll get everything done up nice. You see we're on high now. You just want a slight angle, not too angled, else it will fly up, just a little bit of an angle and uh, all of the soup material will go into the blades and it gets it nice and smooth. Okay, fantastic. Get a little cloth to put that on, a little napkin. All right, so we only need uh, eight ounces is a cup, five, we just need a little over a half a cup, it's fine. Why are we adding coconut milk? We're adding coconut milk because it's going to help provide you satiety. We added uh, good fats. I do not use cream. It has this, It has the ability to inflame the body in a silent way. You're not really feeling it. it turns on your innate immune system. Not everyone. Almost 70% of people cannot handle the casein protein, either the casein 1, A1, or A2. So coconut milk also nourishes the body. It helps the body know it's going to burn fat for fuel. It has the ability to burn fat for fuel because it is a medium chain triglyceride. So that in a form is fantastic. So we've got half the can here. 
We're just gonna pour that in. So it gives you more nourishment and like I said, satiety, making it even more delicious and filling. Now with the added bone broth, if you're not just plain vegetarian or strictly vegan, you're gonna get plenty of protein here. I used a little bit larger portion of ginger when you're starting out and you're not used to ginger, make sure you just use an inch. I'm used to it and I love it. So it is just terrific. Now carrots are naturally sweet. Carrots are naturally high in the orange, it's beta carotene. That is the precursor to vitamin A. And where does it get converted? It's in our liver. Carrots are also an excellent vegetable for your liver. Carrot juice has been used for many years for the liver. Ginger and ginger tea help to clear off fatty liver, as well as getting rid of fructose and sodas and things like that. But this is just fantastic. Let's ladle some into a little bowl and give it a try. Now you wanna to top this with chopped parsley, chopped red onion, uh, your choice, uh, sprouted pumpkin seeds. You see how delicious this is? So this is really rich and yummy, but still light and satisfying. So why are we cooking simple vitality in the kitchen? Your cells know what to do. They are programmed to heal and repair. They need the tools to do that. So we're either eating to heal ourselves and give them the ability to do their job or we're damaging them, damaging the mitochondria and causing and setting this up for disease. So this is part of it. Where's my spoon? Things are everywhere. So you're going to do a little taste. You're here with me. I wish you could taste this. It's just flipping so yummy. Mm. It's going to be lighter than a butternut squash soup. It is fantastic. So thanks for joining me here for another recipe. And this recipe, like I said, is perfect for the late summer spleen stomach sessions that we've been doing. If you've gone this long, please uh, follow me so you can uh, get notified when a new video comes out. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you.